Hi, welcome to Peter Dan's educational videos. Today we're going to be talking about type 2A muscle fibers. Not the strong muscle fibers, not the weak ones, the ones in the middle. Before we get into type 2A muscle fibers, I want to have a good quick chat about the difference between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers in general. Type 1 muscle fibers. Type 1 muscle fibers are, aren't very strong, aren't very powerful, they're weaker and a little bit slower contracting. They don't grow at a very fast speed, but the big advantage with them is that they are extremely endurable. They last for a very, very long period of time. You'll find a lot of long distance athletes, marathon runners, cross country skiers have a very high percentage of these muscle fibers. Hence the reason their body is capable of enduring their sport and their event for a long period of time without feeling fatigued. On the other hand, we've got type 2 muscle fibers. Type 2 muscle fibers are very strong, very powerful, they grow very large at a very fast speed, but the disadvantage with them is that they are not very endurable. They last for a very short period of time. So you'll find a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of sprinters, such as 100 meter runners, etc., shot putters, power lifters, they all have a lot of type 2 muscle fibers. And that tends to be the, de the dominant difference between the two. Type 1 muscle fibers, you'll also hear them being called slow twitch, and the type 2 muscle fibers, you'll also find them called fast twitch muscle fibers. Now we're going to have a quick chat about the type 2 muscle fibers. Type 2 muscle fibers are in, the, in themselves is broken down into two parts. You've got type 2A and type 2B. Type 2B is the dominant type of strong, powerful muscle fiber that I just spoke to you about earlier. They're very strong, very powerful, grow at a very fast speed, but they're not very endurable. Now, on the other hand, you actually have type 2A muscle fibers. And unlike type 2B muscle fibers, these type 2A muscle fibers are in a little world of their own, in between type 1 and type 2. Type 2A muscle fibers um, are half type 1, half type 2. They are strong. Uh, but not as strong as the type 2B muscle fibers. They are endurable, but not as endurable as the type 1 muscle fiber. The big advantage, however, is that they are extremely adaptable. So if you train hard, uh, you can actually convert and those type 2 muscle, type 2A muscle fibers and develop them as type 2B muscle fibers. If you are an endurance athlete, you can take these type 1A muscle fibers, train them to be endurable, and you can create uh, more endurable muscle fibers within your muscle tissue. So they're adaptable. They're in a little world in between where they get a little bit of the best of both worlds. Um, they have a little bit of the best and a little bit of the worst, I guess, in both worlds. So they're a little world in between, but they are extremely adaptable. Now that we understand the difference between uh, type 1, type 2A muscle fibers and type 2B muscle fibers, let's have a talk about how we can train those type 2A muscle fibers in bodybuilding and how we can get them to grow big and strong and develop them onto the type uh, 2A side. Um, the way we do it is by still lifting heavy weight, but if you just go straight for a really heavy weight where you get to failure between four to six reps, that weight is so heavy, your body doesn't need to recruit the type 2A muscle fibers. It goes straight for your big strong type 2B muscle fibers. And if you just set after set after set going heavy, all you do is keep pounding these muscle fibers and you don't give your body an opportunity to recruit the type 2A muscle fibers and get the bigger package. So what we need to do is in order to take the bigger package, we need to start thinking about the perception of what heavy means. Heavy doesn't necessarily mean lifting such a heavy weight you get to failure within four to six reps. Heavy weight means that you get to a point where you are physically 100% exhausted, where you can't lift it anymore, but that rep range now represents anywhere between 8 to 12 reps. So you want to be going big, powerful muscle contraction up, nice and slow down. Powerful muscle contraction up, nice and slow down. Take your 4 to 5 second reps like we've been talking about over the last year, but the main thing is you still want to be going to failure. So what happens is, when you start lifting this lighter weight, well, it's not light, but it's not as heavy as getting to failure between six. So it's lighter comparison to just going in that four to six rep range. So we're looking at a weight where 75% of max, um, it would be a good weight. 
And when you're lifting that 75% of max, your body thinks to itself, well, I don't really need to recruit all the big, strong muscle fibers. So I'll recruit a little bit of those type 2 A muscle fibers, but I'll also start to recruit a little bit of those type 2 B muscle fibers. So your body starts burning a higher percentage of those type 2 B muscle fibers and starts to train them and recruit them as um, the muscle fibers that we're going to use to get stronger later on down the track. Now as your rep range begins and you start to target those type 2 B fibers, you're going to start getting more and more fatigued. As you start becoming fatigued around the 5-6 rep mark, your body starts to recruit a little bit more of those type 2 A muscle fibers. When you start recruiting, when you start getting to the very end, um, and you start getting to the last two reps, your body goes, uh oh, I'm getting really struggle now, it's better to recruit all the type 2 A muscle fibers. So now you're recruiting a very large percentage of, of a wide variety of different muscle fibers. Now when you get to those last few reps and your body actually gets stuck, right at that minute, right at that moment, your body panics and recruits everything. So not just your type 2 A muscle fibers, but your type 2 B muscle fibers and your slow twitch type 1 muscle fibers as well. And it starts to just get its hands on everything it possibly can and use all of it to get as big and strong as possible. So if you just go really heavy, um, such as going four to six reps and getting a failure that way, you'll just recruit those type one fibers. If you start to back the weight off a little bit and increase your rep range, your body will now start to recruit some of those type, what, type two B muscle fibers as well. And remember, those ones are adaptable. So by the end of your workout, instead of just going heavy, 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 if you get to failure between the eight, 12 rep range, you've now broken down a wide, more wider variety of muscle fibers and you're going to start training those type 2 fibers to grow as well and now you've got a whole bunch of muscle fibers uh, being used by your body as a bodybuilder as an untapped source so start tapping into that new source uh, by, get, by going heavy but heavy as a perception of getting a failure between 8 to 12 reps and start building some new muscle fibers